What's your favourite genome? Oh, I was looking at that and going, is that a mouse? Oh, obviously, I need better glasses. Yes, it's obviously a mouse. So the Ensemble is what's called a genome browser. It allows you to go and navigate around the genome and find anything that you find is interesting. Uh, it's, it's not only available for humans, there is also Ensemble for bacteria, which is the thing that I was using to help with the project. But Ensemble for bacteria contains so many uh, bacteria that they're not particularly well documented, whereas these ones are a bit better documented. So if I click on human and go and look at the human page for Ensemble, this is a proper database. So as I said in the notes, originally when Margaret Dayhoff created the protein informatics resource, there were very few proteins and they were maybe adding five or six a year, maybe a few more. Sequencing proteins was incredibly painful. You had to break into pieces and do an uh, reaction. It's just terrible. So then you'd phone them up and you'd say, what's the sequence? And you'd read it out to them. And then they put it at the end of their text file. And that'd be another entry in their file. And everything was nice and it worked like that for a reasonable amount of time. But a true database is not organized like that. A true database has unique uh, flags. It has extra information that you can search on. It has so it has to have unique keys. So the first thing is every uh, database entry has to have a unique ent identifier. But if I do a SARS-CoV sequence and I do another SARS-CoV sequence and they're only different from one base, what's the point of me storing all of the bases rather than just storing the difference? That makes a lot more sense if you're doing a database. So database, true databases get rid of redundancy. So here you can go do all these things with uh, this particular assembly of the human genome. So the current one is called GRCH38.P13. God knows why, but that's what it's called. Now, if you want to browse around, you can start by going to the carrier type browser. And this gives you full ability to browse around everything. So what it does is it aligns up all of the chromosomes for the human genome and then you can click on them and explore so down here is mt for the mitochondrial genome uh, this build is from 2014 but it was slightly updated in 2020 there are 20448 coding genes that's an interesting book um, by a person who quite frankly drives me crazy called Matt Ridley and uh, Ridley was writing this book before we'd done the human genome and what his argument was was if you're a really complicated organism you need to have a really big genome because it's got to describe every single part of the complexity of that organism so mankind being the most complicated organism on the planet, obviously, as we're the peak prime predator and the only intelligent life, we really intelligent life we know of on the planet, we had to have the biggest and best genome. Now, unfortunately for Matt, who ran BlackRock and lost millions of pounds worth of money and still goes around advising on shareholders and stocks and things and just really shouldn't because um, he's as bad at biology as anything else. The humans are not particularly special. We don't have massive amounts of genes. To be honest, we are one of the most amazing evolutionary inventions of all. We are what we call plastic. That means when we have something around us, we adapt to it because we have a brain 
which allows us to adapt to it. You imagine you're a plant or you're a snail, yeah, a snail or a mollusk or, or even a frog. So a frog, you have three different life phases. So you're an egg, you're a tadpole, you're an adult frog. And in each of those different phases, you want to be doing something different and coping with the different environment. So you need to have a specific set of programming laid out for you to make sure that you can cope with those different environments. So it does. Frog has a bigger genome than we do. And plants, some of them have massively bigger genomes than we do. Like a hundred times bigger than ours. No, 10 times bigger than ours. Just massive things. But a lot, some of that is also due to uh, them duplicating their genomes. We like plants with duplicated genomes. Plants with duplicated genomes have fat seeds and fat seeds make good food. So wheat has a duplicated genome. We like that. Food, most food grains have duplicated genomes. But anyway, humans are not special. We haven't got a massive amount of genes, but we use them flexibly. We have many different cell types. And because we have intelligence, we don't need everything hardwired. A plant needs it hardwired. It needs a response to say, when you have this temperature or these conditions or that stage of your life, then activate these genes. Humans change their environment and the way they respond to their environment. So we don't need so many. We're clever. So 20,000, it was originally estimated we'd have at least 100,000. Then it was dropped to 40,000. In reality, it's about 21,000. There might be a few more than that because uh, we don't quite frankly know what we're doing. There's a lot of junk and we're not completely brilliant at figuring out what's happening in the junk bits. Uh, there's non-coding genes. So sometimes you end up with uh, a, what's called a pseudo gene, which is a gene that used to exist and has become dead because it's been switched off. So it's become damaged because you inserted a single nucleotide. And so you've got a frame shift error or the uh, start or stop codon's gone wrong. Or something's gone wrong, so it's no longer a valid gene. Humans have this in their vitamin C pathways. We do not have a pathway for making vitamin C. If we don't have vitamin C, we get scurvy and our teeth fall out and we die. No other animal on within our close associated group has this problem. So poor gorillas spend their entire time eating plants be full of vitamin C and therefore could do without having a vitamin C pathway, already have a vitamin C pathway. Only we don't. If evolution depended on intelligent design, that's stupid. Right, there are 6,749,926 structural variants. That's quite a lot, really. Now, if I click on the, any of these particular things and I can jump to region view, it will take me to that stretch. So here's the chromosome now laid out horizontally. This red thing is telling me the little region that they've got highlighted. And this is showing me all of the genes that occur within that particular region of that chromosome. So you see, that's not a very big region and there's quite a lot of things going in there. And remember, this is nowhere near the detail of seeing each of the individual bases. These are just genes and they contain potentially thousands of bases. Uh, you can look at the GC content. So where it goes up, you're likely to have coding regions. Uh, where it's low, you have non-coding regions. And then there's loads of different color things for in-frame reads and enhancers, promoters, non-protein um, enhancing regions. There's lots of things that can be happening within the genome, even if it looks like it's junk. For bacteria, you have the same sort of thing, but instead of you having the complete carrier type, you just have a circular uh, view of their genome. 
and you can pick regions the same way as you did in this one. So, uh, probably I can pick, if I pick um, the mitochondria, that's a lot easier. That it goes and gives me the whole thing. So it tells me all of the genes and any repeats and stuff that might be in it. Right. So genome browsers are quite good if you're looking for something from a specific organism. I could download the DNA sequences. So here are the FASTA files for the DNA of each one of the chromosomes. I don't know why it's got DNA. What does DNA SM stand for? Let's have a look where it says the file called README. If you don't know what anything is, you want to read the README. Because the README will tell you what it is. Apart from README, <laughs> open with Notepad. Important, you can download some names by you can use Biomart to do the download instead of grabbing it this way because this is a bit slow. RM is mass genomic DNA to get rid of the repeats and low complexity regions. So what's SM then? SM, soft masked. All repeats and low complexity regions have been replaced with lowercase letters instead of actually removed completely. So remember when you're reading through the textbook, they're talking about these uh, DNA fingerprints variable regions. They're just repetitive things that are not going to contain genes, so you can get rid of them. Because otherwise, when you do a search, you're wasting time searching through an area where there's going to be nothing interesting. So don't. Has the blast thing done it? Yes, blast has finished. 